Welcome to my first ever speed build. So I hope you've got yourself a drink, a snack, a blanket, get comfy, and let's get into it. So in today's video, we're building a starter home in the world of Willow Creek. Now I did have two reference photos for this one. I'll put them up on the screen so you can see. Um, I used one for the exterior and then one just for the entrance way. I thought they were both so cute. The spandrels, I don't know if that's the proper term for them but the spandrels on the roof line like the little decals i guess <laughs> i thought they were so cute but i couldn't find a way to replicate it in the game so i didn't well i kind of did on the front porch area but i couldn't get the proper roof trim that i wanted but i think i made it work and then in the second photo that's how i did the entranceway and the fencing situation i really loved how overgrown it was and the little ajar gate i thought it was so cute i just merged them together and i made this build so I did say it was base game, but you might have seen me place the dormers on the roof, those little windowy structure things. Those are from the cottage living expansion pack. I don't end up keeping them, don't worry. I thought they were gonna be cheaper than how I typically built them, like with walls and a roof and stuff. Just the base game method, right? But they actually ended up being like, I think $450 or something. So I do end up deleting them and then making it entirely base game going into this i knew i wanted it to be base game so i'm not entirely sure why i put the dormers there but yeah i do fix it in that so do not worry and then the only other item you're going to see me place that isn't base game is the floral arranging table from seasons now i was thinking that this might be for my save file i haven't decided yet but i was thinking that the sim that lives here is really into gardening and floral arranging so i do keep it in the front lot uh, for a bit of it, but by the end of the video, I do delete it and replace it with a debug wheelbarrow. So when it's uploaded, it will be entirely base game. I keep it there just so you can see the placement that I was thinking of, but you for sure don't need to keep it there. Well, it won't be there. So, uh, you can replace it if you want. You can delete whatever items, replace it with whatever you choose, but actually talking about the exterior a little bit. So I really loved the yellow paneling in the reference photo, but the yellow paneling we have was just looking kind of white, so I didn't end up using it. And I also really wanted it to be vertical paneling. You can see now I'm trying horizontal ones because that's where the colored ones are, but I wasn't really feeling any of them. And the yellow one specifically just was not working for what I wanted. So I end up going with this vertical paneling that I have now, but in a brown color. And then I implement the green into the windows, like the shutters and stuff. I was really happy with the uh, roof color I picked because, I don't know, I never tend to go for the ruddy brown roofs because I'm not sure. I feel like I never know how to mix the wallpaper so that they look nice. But I actually ended up really liking how this turned out with the roof and the colors and everything. But I will say, this video is essentially... Uh, Ali being indecisive for 35 minutes so hopefully you can relate if not I hope you'll enjoy anyways but yeah again I'm just tweaking the wallpaper I struggled so much with this build I could not tell you why because it is simply just a starter home so naturally it doesn't have a lot going on but for some reason I just could not make anything work or make anything I was happy with looking back at it now I actually kind of like this color palette that I have with like the ruddy roof and the brown windows and the I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be yellow paneling but I didn't end up keeping it which you'll see but yeah I actually kind of like this now that I'm looking back at it but I struggled for so long not only with the exterior but the interior too I actually decorated the whole interior and then I decided I didn't like it so I deleted it and started a new recording and then in my second attempt I still didn't like it but I kept it in I did not include the first attempt because it would have been way too long I don't like to cut things out but I don't know I felt for a starter home it shouldn't be it the video shouldn't be this long to begin with but I didn't want to cut too much out it's just that one part that I cut out and then also me scrolling through the menu for minutes I Okay, I'll get, 
I'll explain more when we get onto the inside, but I was searching for this one particular photo because I thought it was free in the debug menu, but it was not. It was $120, so I scrolled, I swear, for 30 minutes trying to find the this picture and also, um, you know the floral vase we have that has the you, cooking utensils in it, like the spoons and the spatulas, all of that, but it has a it looks like porcelain and it has the cute flowers on it. I really, really want to include that in here, but I could not find it for the life of me. So it doesn't end up being in here. Um, I end up using, I don't know, I don't really like the one I ended up using, but it was the cheapest one and I also couldn't find the actual one I wanted. So you won't see it in this build, but hopefully you know what I'm talking about. But here you can see I'm working on the exterior of the house still. This is basically what it ends up looking like you can see i've found the color palette that i want to go with i don't keep this fence and gate i end up using uh, debug items for that when it comes to starter homes debug and the live edit menu are seriously my holy grail so i use a lot of those and i spend a lot of time scrolling through the menu which is why i cut it out because it was excessive so yeah, yeah it'll just be cut out but um, I wanted to include the little window up top, but in the reference picture, I believe it has like some very overgrown stuff and I didn't just want to use a normal flower box because it wasn't really, it wasn't matching the vibe that I wanted for this house. So I ended up using these, I'm not even sure what you would call them, like faux balconies. Um, they're from Beast Game. I replaced it with a brown color, um, but I just sized them down and then I took this hanging plant and I... From the debug menu and i raised it up using the nine key and i put it in these little boxes so in case you don't know like the live edit and debug menu is basically this hidden object menu that grabs items from the outside world and puts them into your build and buy menu so if you see like the plants on the outside of the lot or like that hanging plant on the the wall by the river that's what i end up using in these in the little uh flower box area so that's a debug menu item so it means that you can like it just pulls objects from around the world um and lets you use them in your in your lot because they're not available in the usual build and buy category there is cheats for them i can't remember them off the top of my head so I'll either put them on the screen or they will of course be in the description box so you can um try that out in your own game if you would like but for me i use the better build and buy mod because it just makes life so much easier so what that does is basically you can see it here now if you open up your game and you click on the window box icon your menu will not look like this unless you have the mod basically instead of having to use the cheats this mod does it for me and then it just incorporates it into my regular build and buy menu so it just makes my life a lot easier and also the best feature of this mod in my opinion is the fact that you can eye drop the debug items and if you hold shift and you click with them you can duplicate it and it is just as it's just the best thing ever because basically if you don't have this mod installed when you put down a debug item it's not really classified as like one of these proper items so you can't just duplicate it or anything so if you put down an item and then you leave the menu you will have to scroll and scroll to find it again and replace it and so before i had this i would always put down i don't know like 20 of each debug item that i wanted to use in case like i needed more of it and then my lot was just a mess and it was a lot to deal with but you can see that i'm using this debug fence here I'm not sure the world that it's originally from might be Willow Creek, might be Oasis Springs. I'm not entirely sure, but I really liked it. I thought it matched nicely with the fence that goes along. Would you call that a fence? Maybe it's more of a wall, <laughs> the wall that goes along the river. So I included this one. And then here you can see I'm using these, I'm not sure what you would call it, but they're these floral pieces these leafy greens that are meant to go on a wooden debug fence we have but i don't know i really wanted the stone feel of 
this fence so I didn't replace it with the one that belongs with these flower things. I don't end up keeping these flower things. That's just what I'm gonna call them because I don't know what else to call them. Vines? Bushes. Draping bushes. I don't know. You can let me know. But um, yeah, I didn't end up keeping them just because they were too symmetrical in the way that they were spaced out. So I, I don't know. I had to scrap them because I couldn't make it work. And then here you can see I was scrolling for so long through the debug menu to find the plants. So I just cut that out. And now you can see that I'm arranging them. I went for a pink, green, and white color scheme for the landscaping and then similar on the interior, but I think pretty much no white on the interior, more just brown, pink, and green. Yeah, I think that's what I ended up going with. Um, yeah, so here on the right side of the screen, you can see this little menu thing. This is the tool mod, so this is another mod I have installed in my game. I will have all the mods linked below. But this one just allows you to tweak objects in a way that base game doesn't let you. So basically tool stands for take objects off the lot. So I'm allowed to rotate them or scale them up in very precise increments. Because you can scale up items without the mod if you do control 9 or if you want to scale down control 0. But it goes in intervals of one, two, three, four, etc. And sometimes the items are just too large. So with the tool mod, I can customize it precisely to what I want it to be. So this is another holy grail mod in case you want to, if you're a builder, highly recommend. It just makes my life a lot easier. I didn't think it was too tricky to learn at first, but I know some people have had issues, but it's actually quite simple once you get the hang of it. And I can't believe I didn't use it for the longest time. So highly recommend. Um, yeah, so I'm just working on the landscaping a bit more here. I wanted to use plants from the surrounding environment. So you can see these pink flowers or the ferns and the grass. You'll see a lot of um, elements in the outside world because I wanted it to feel connected since I blocked it off with this very harsh stone fence but I didn't want it, the fence to feel out of place. So if I randomly move my camera, it's because I'm trying to see the objects in the outside world and then incorporate it into this lot. So I think I ended up doing a pretty good job. I really wanted to use these orange flowers, but I wasn't really, you can see it on the left side of the stairs, but it wasn't really working out how I wanted. So I do believe that I ended up getting rid of them. Yeah, something about the shape of the bush wasn't quite working for me, so I didn't do it. Um, but now I'm going to go in and add flooring to the front and back porch. Also, I just noticed those roof pieces are missing the proper wallpapering, so I will fix that before I upload it. But I'm just making it feel super lush and trying to match the vibe that I was originally going for. And then here I'm... Is it an awning maybe? I am at a loss for words today. I don't know why I can't think of what anything's called, but hopefully you understand what I mean. In the reference photo the second one where i mainly just copied the entrance way they had this little i'm gonna call it an awning sorry if that's not what it is they had this awning and it was quite overgrown and lush so i wanted to include that just because i don't know i felt like it was the build was missing something so i'm using this draping plant again which you can see in the background once again on the walls by the river uh, and then also these low-lying flowers. This object is my favorite bush to incorporate into my landscape. I don't think you'll ever see a landscape where I don't have this bush. Unless it's, I don't know, an Oasis Springs or something. But it is just simply the prettiest, most effective, lush-looking bush that we have. And it just works with everything. So, big fan. Highly recommend if you <laughs> don't usually use it. But... Yeah, you can see I'm copying some of these ferns, and I also wanted the landscaping to go off the the grid. Uh, you can do this with uh, debug items because sometimes they have a wider um, grid size or space that they take up, so you can kind of get away with them pe peeking off of the lot, I guess. But with the normal build and buy objects, you can't do that. So that's just another benefit. I sound like I'm sponsored by this menu. That's not a possibility <laughs> because it's an object menu, 
but I'm just a big fan of it. But again, if you want to use this for yourself, I'll leave the cheats below for you. Yeah, so the front's coming together pretty nice now. I end up adding some trees. I do use debug trees, but they, since they're debug trees, when you go in certain angles, they just disappear. They don't delete off the lot, like they just go transparent. Oh, you can see now. Um, so they are there, but I had to use those because they were the affordable ones. But I don't understand the pricing in this game. The bushes and the plants, everything is so much money and it just doesn't make any sense to me. I went to go place down a toilet paper roll. It was $75. It should be 5 I don't know. It was a struggle, I will tell you that much. But I'm adding some terrain paint underneath the fence and under the plants and stuff. I like it because it looks a bit like a shadow, but also it just it just looks a bit more realistic because it could look like a little bit of mud, which is very typical for a fence. And then I'm landscaping in the back here. I end up adding these bushes in between the gap between the house and the fence. Yeah, you can see them now. But yeah, this space was a little bit awkward, so I thought these bushes filled it in really nice. And then I will add a window on this top roof part because it just looked a little bland. Um, but I do end up liking it. I wanted to use a window that wasn't one with the green shutters, but I just couldn't make it work and it looked really out of place. But you'll see that when we get to it. But now I'm moving on to the front yard. Since this lot is so small, there is no backyard. So I wanted the front yard to feel really pretty and lush with all the landscaping and kind of like a little secret garden vibe if you will um with the fence and everything so i was imagining as i said earlier that this sim loves gardening and floral arranging for me it's more floral arranging because that's i really want to use the table but i kept it base game so if you don't have seasons you can just make them a gardener which is a career and also for the starter homes when you move in i think your sim will have maybe a thousand to two thousand dollars in this one but when you move in basically your sim's not loaded with cash but gardening in this game is will make you bank so even if you move in and you have zero simoleons which you shouldn't in this case because i left enough money or wiggle room for your sim to to have more than zero simoleons but basically there's a bush right in front of this house that you could harvest and start planting right away if you wanted to make your money zero or something like a little rags to riches even though you already have a house but yeah in the environment around there is bushes you don't even need to buy seeds you can just harvest them and then plant them right away and make some money so i don't know what kind of bush it is in front of this house i think it'll vary per person because obviously the the world doesn't upload to the gallery it's just that um lot so the bush might not even be there for you i don't know but it works out perfectly for me um yeah so i don't know why because usually when i do builds i come up with really in-depth storylines for the sims i think it was a mix of things for why i didn't create one for this sim okay let's backtrack I was thinking that this might be for my save file, but I don't know. Since I couldn't come up with um, a storyline that I really liked for The Sim, all I really have is that they're a gardener. So I'm a bit on the fence on whether I'll include this or not in my save file. And unfortunately, I can't give you a background story of this Sim, which is really sad, but it was okay. <laughs> fast forward now it's a mix of the fact that i was so indecisive i could not focus on anything else except trying to make it look good so because something wasn't flowing right when i was building this but i ended up making it work in the end but it was a mix of that and the fact that it's a starter home and within my starter homes i don't like to include a lot of clutter or personality i guess because my thinking is that with starter homes through the affordable ones, the ones that you can move your family into, 
when you open a new world and so I didn't want there to be too much personality so that essentially I wanted it to be easily customizable for whatever kind of sim or family you want to move in here so that's why I don't have a backstory for the sim per se their whole personality is based on the exterior of this lot but in future videos and stuff there will be backstories for me to explain and I'm just sad that I didn't make one for this sim because that's one of my favorite things to do but it's just because it's a starter home you know it's a whole mix of things but you can see that this archway here that I put in between the fences that's actually a wedding arch everything functions fine I've play tested everything um but I felt like the entranceway still needed a little something something a little spice so I put in that archway and I think it ends up looking really cute and then I also used this pebble terrain paint this terrain paint gave me so much nostalgia because my grandparents had a similar kind of thing like in real life in their backyard with the pebbles they were a bit larger um but it just gave me such a funny feeling when i was putting it down so i decided to cover the whole lot in it because oh, i just loved the feeling of it and i was thinking if they're a gardener like they might want a bit more support than just grass like they might want some more solid ground don't know if that makes sense but i thought it looked cute so i kept it but now we've moved on to the interior so i'm starting off because it's a starter home, I want to put down the bare necessities, every object that your sim needs, just to make sure that I had enough money to do everything. So it looks a little janky, a little ugly right now, but I promise I do fix it. Um, in the build, I decided to include a computer instead of a TV because, let's be honest, TVs kind of useless in comparison to computers. Computers give you so many gameplay elements and TVs, it just bumps your fun. You can kind of learn skills from them, but I thought a computer was a way better choice, especially for a starter home, because you could write books, publish books, get some money. There's just so many good things. So I picked a computer over a TV. Here you can see the, oh my gosh, <laughs> the flooring and the wallpaper, again, I just could not make anything work. I really wanted to go with this teal, green, and pink color scheme based on this couch, but it just, it wasn't matching the exterior of the house and it was really bothering me, so I did not end up going with that. But I do really like the concept of it, and I really wanted to use this couch in the swatch because I don't think I ever have. So it didn't work out for this build, but I definitely will be using those in another build because the color scheme was so cute and I haven't really done anything like it before. I'm thinking maybe an apartment could work well with this color scheme, but yeah. So I didn't end up going with it. This was my second attempt. I wanted to keep it in because I didn't want to cut too much out. Um, but it was also just looking a little too, I guess, polished maybe. It didn't feel like a starter home. It felt too nice <laughs> maybe is the i'm not sure how to explain it but with my starter homes i want them to feel not entirely dingy but just like it's a cheap house you know i want it to feel a little bit cheap like i didn't want the couch to feel too new or too nice or pretty so i don't end up keeping it i use one of the chairs but i use a different couch i think Another thing I was struggling so much with, like why this build was so hard, is because with the pack restrictions, our base game couch options truly are horrendous. I, oh my gosh, I end up going with um, the most classic base game. Actually, maybe it's not the most classic, but when I think of standard base game couch, I think of the box couch. You'll see it when I put it out. But I just thought it kind of looks like an ikea couch i suppose and it therefore kind of cheap and it felt more startery to me than the set that i have here originally i wanted to include this you'll see when i put it out but the best base game couch we have which is like this plush three seater it comes in a green a beige and an orangey kind of swatch um 
but I thought it was looking a little too nice, a little too comfy, a little too rich for what I was going for. Um, but now you can see that I'm completely switching up the color palette because I just, I couldn't make it work. I don't know why, but I just couldn't. I, I'm a huge fan of this brown rug. I will use it any chance I can get, but I thought it works so nicely with this build specifically because on the exterior, there's a green and brown color scheme with the windows and the paneling. So I thought it looked really nice. I don't end up keeping that couch. Uh, you'll see me replace it. But I also moved this rug into the bedroom and putting a new one out here that has hints of pink in it, which you'll see. This is the couch that I was talking about. This is the best base game couch. And this is the ugly box couch. <laughs> so the other one just looked too plush and comfy. And it looked like they had more money than I wanted this house to have, if that makes sense. So I end up going with this one. It just, oh, it does not look comfy. It looks like it's made of cardboard, painted. I don't know. Everything about it is just, it doesn't scream comfort to me, which is why I was hesitant to use it. But I think it worked for the feel I wanted this um, build to have. So yeah and then i just right now it's very brown very green but then later on i will include more elements of pink when i find the rug that i'm talking about um but in terms of decorating <laughs> this was such a struggle here's another issue another issue i have with the pricing in this game the pictures the wall art what is up because i can never afford anything in the catalog when i'm trying to furnish mm, not furnish <laughs> decorate the walls of a starter home because everything is so expensive we have this one image it's you'll see when i place it but it's this leaf picture kind of i think it's 50 50 or 75 dollars or something but that is the only cheap painting we have and it's small and when i sized it up it looked a little funny so ugh, i do end up using it but then i had to kind of bite the bullet and you know put in a 200 dollars picture but i think it ended up being worth it because the other one was looking a little dinky on the wall but you can just see that i replaced the cottage living dormers with my custom ones which ended up being cheaper than I thought it would be. So it worked out in the end. But here is the pink and green rug that I was talking about. When I found this rug, I decided that it's what I wanted. I wanted to incorporate the pink and the green from the outside, which is what I was going to try and do with my original concept, but I just couldn't make it work. So I think it was the blue that was bothering me originally. I just couldn't make it work. Um, it wasn't really going with the earthy tones I wanted, but these pictures here are the ones that I promise I spent, not even exaggerated, um, 30 minutes, I could say, searching for them because I thought they were free since they were in the debug menu, but they were not, so it was a waste of my time. But this is the one cheap photo that I was talking about. It's cute. But it's very small and when I tried to scale it up, it wasn't really working right. So I move it to the bedroom in the end and I end up putting a, I think it's the picture of the yellow flowers, which worked a bit better because I could scale it up without it looking fuzzy. But here you can see I'm playing around with the tile again. It was such a struggle trying to figure out the wallpapers that I wanted to use, but I think in the end I'm happy with what I picked and here I decided to incorporate more of the pink that I would make the coffee pot pink because originally I was going to try and do the stove and the fridge as pink but I felt like it was a bit overkill and the pink didn't quite match the rug so I didn't end up going with that but I do like the pink coffee pot in the end. I was also going to try and make the stools pink, but now you can see that I'm just going in and trying to find more decorations. So I want to go with these pink curtains. I do end up placing them again at the end when I delete the floral arranging table because I realized I had more money because I think I delete them at some point, but they do come back. 
but I'm trying to find some plants and things like that to fill up the space and you're gonna see me in a second uh, go to the gallery and when I do that it's because when you go into live mode and then you go back into build mode the value of the items you've placed down decreases so if you delete them they won't be selling for as much as you bought them for so I had less money than I had started with so when I go to the gallery I'm checking to see how much the house costs and then I'm giving myself some more money and the way I'm able to do it by clicking on the money and then adding a number is with I think it's UI cheats that allows me to do that. But if you don't have UI cheats, if you go into the cheat console and type in testing cheats space on, and then type in rosebud after you've hit enter on the testing cheats one, I believe rosebud gives you a thousand. And then if you do mother load, it should be 50,000, I believe. I can leave the cheats in the description box, but that's a way to do it if you don't have the mod installed. Here you can see that I was testing out the pink appliances and it wasn't really working. I ended up not even going back to the brown ones. I stick with these black ones, which I like a bit more because it blends in a bit better with the countertops and then it allows the other colors to pop, I think. So yeah, I ended up liking that. And then the plant in the sink does move, I promise. <laughs> but I don't, I either delete it or I move it, but it doesn't stay there. But here you can see I'm trying to incorporate more pink elements because right now it's just that trim on the original rug and then the coffee pot. But I felt like the rug that I was going to place wasn't really working. So I don't end up keeping that, but I more wanted it to be green, brown, and then hints of pink. And I think I accomplished that. But it was definitely a bit of a struggle with using just base game. But now I'm trying to decorate the front entrance a little bit. This coat rack, I liked it, but I also wanted to use the one that has the hat and the coat on a plank of wood that goes on the wall, but it was more expensive than the original coat rack. So I kept that one, and then I thought I was going to have to place this kitty dresser, which you saw for a brief moment, but thankfully I was able to give myself more money so I could afford like a proper dresser. But here I pulled out some debug items, which were basically all I could decorate with. So I have, I think they're supposed to be wooden sculptures. Uh, there's a bunny and then I have a teapot as well. But with the teapot, you'll see in a second, I was originally going to place it on the stove, but then I thought you could tell that it's not an actual teapot. So I just end up putting it off to the side by the flower. And I do like how it looks, but usually I do it with the cottage living decor because we have a... It's like a crock pot item so usually i like to put it on the stove because it looks like maybe the family was just cooking some dinner or something but i couldn't do it with this one because it was base game but here i am cluttering up this shelf i use all debug items for this so none of it cost money except for the actual shelf i didn't want to do this originally because i feel like it's giving too much personality and if you move your family into here, you might want to delete it just so it feels more like a new house, like they've just moved in. But the wall just looked way too empty and I didn't have the money to add in counters. So I thought this was a innovative, <laughs> innovative probably isn't the correct word, but an affordable way to add some decor to the wall. But you can see that I'm flip flopping back and forth trying to use the items that I pulled out from the debug menu. Oh, these are the, I think they're, they're wooden again. Uh, these are more items that your sims can make at the woodworking table, but they're just little bowls and they're free. And these ones are nice because they won't go smelly. <laughs> like if you pull out the white bowls and your sims won't try to clean them up. So they'll stay as decor, but here I want to add some more furnishing to the dresser. So I put this little lotion basket and again, I'm trying to give myself more money. There's the plant because it was just looking so bare and I considered putting a mirror or a picture above the dresser but you can see that I was running so low on money so I went back and I checked the gallery again to make sure I had enough funds and then this is where I swap out the picture and the, the picture in the living room with the picture in the bedroom and I also changed the lighting color on that lamp because it was very severe and so it was kind of messing up the color but there i replaced the floral arranging table and put in the base game debug wheelbarrow and then i'm adding some more curtains with the 
funds that I got from deleting that table. And then I'm just gonna go around and do some final touches. I'm gonna add some decor into the bay window there because that's what I wanted to do originally, but I didn't have the money that I thought I would, but I gave myself a bit more so I could. I end up putting this planter box. I was originally gonna go with a clutter box, this one here, but then I figured it's a sim who loves gardening, so I might as well put the planter box. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. So I'm going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed the screenshots. Hope you enjoyed the speed build. Please leave any suggestions you have on how to improve videos or things you want to see me build. And hopefully you'll join me in the next video. Bye guys.